Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going over the advanced difficulty level of linear and exponential growth. If you're ever struggling with these, I highly recommend you revisit our medium and foundational difficulty levels. Make sure to subscribe before we get into it. And let's get started. So Takeda is hosting an event for a hundred of her fans. For the event, she meets each of her fans one at a time at a constant rate. After 90 minutes, she's met 45% of her fans at the event. Which of the following equations models the number of fans F remaining for Takeda to meet M minutes after the event started? The key term here is that she's meeting the fans at a constant rate. From our previous videos, we might notice that constant rate means a slope so uh, that we only have um, a linear equation here, not an exponential function. That would be if we had a common ratio. Um, or like a common factor, it's being multiplied by something here. It's just something uh, that's adding or subtracting multiple times. So 100 over fans, that's given that a y-intercept is going to be 100 because she starts with 100 and then she's meeting her fans one at a time in a constant ray over an over a certain amount of time. As we can see here, after 90 minutes, she's met 45% of her fans at the event. 45% is uh, four of 100 is 45. The, this percentage sign is trying to, to trick us into picking exponential function here. So now we can just substitute in 90 for x and then, uh, well, 90 for m, as that's a minute value, and 45 for f. And then we can see which of these two linear equations satisfies this relationship. Uh, 90 times negative uh, 0.5 is negative 45. 100 minus 45 is equal to 55. And then if after 90 minutes she's met 45 of her fans, that does remain true that there will be 55 remaining. If she's met 45 fans and there's 100 total, there's going to be 55 remaining after that 90 minutes. That means that this ordered pair actually does match up into answer choice A, and that means that it is the correct answer. If we try to substitute the same thing in for B, we would not get a true statement. So being able to analyze these relationships in these real world problems, especially when given our mathematical functions, is very important. On to question number two. The depth of a newly formed river has been monitored every six months for the past four years. The scatter plot shows the measured depths in feet t months after monitoring the relationship. Which of the equations best models the relationship between d and t? So we need to determine each of these uh, relationships. First, classify them. We have two linear relationships, one here and one here, and two exponential relationships. Another factor that they're adding is uh, the placement of our variables, which we can very easily solve if we just take a look at our axes. What are our axes labeled as? D, we can see is our y-axis. That means that it is the dependent variable, or what is going to be equal to. And then T is going to be our independent variable. Uh, it is going to change regarding the actual amount of time that has occurred. So that means uh, that our equation format will look like this, D being on the outside and then T. So that already eliminates uh, answer choice A and answer choice B. Now we just need to determine which of these two, C and D, is correct. So um, first we need to look, just take a look at this. Does this relationship model an exponential function better or does it model a linear function better? It looks uh, to conform pretty well to a straight line, but the confirming factor that we can use is if we graphed um, both of our relationships, C and D, into Desmos, or the graph calculator that we have provided with our digital SAT. If you guys may notice, uh, this function will actually decline as time increases because uh, 0.83 is less than 1. This exponential function declines over time. That does not look like our trend at all, which is a straight line in which uh, T creases, uppercase D also increases. D is our correct answer here. On to question number three. We are given the GDP in America or in trillions of dollars over time, and we are trying to find the most reasonable estimate for the GDP for this missing value. As we may notice, we seem to be multiplying by a common factor each year, uh, a little bit less than multiplying by two, uh, as if we notice here. And we can confirm this 
by uh, going ahead and dividing some of these values. So doing 16.024 divided by 8.347, and then so on and so forth. As we can see, this factor is quite constant at around 1.92, so that means we do 16.024 divided by 1.919, uh, to get out 8.347, divide that by 1.92 to get 4.37. In order to find the best estimate, we can go ahead and divide 4.347 by 1.92. This yields 2.26 as our answer, and that is the closest to answer choice B by a mile. Answer choice B is correct. Let's move on to our last question for this skill. So this is a vine that was introduced uh, as an ornamental plant. It was planted throughout the southeast. It covered approximately 3 million acres of land. 60 years later, about 7 million acres of land were covered. 60 years later. Okay, which of the following functions best models the amount of this plant in millions of acres T years after uh, four, 1946? So we have some values here that we need to consider. We have uh, 0 comma uh, 3 million, which we will represent by 3, as our amount of kudzu is just in millions of acres. So we have 0 comma 3, we start at 3, but then 60 years after, we are at 7. We need to see which relationship best models this. Um, of course, we can pretty much get rid of our decreasing exponential function right away, as we can see that our amount is overall increasing over time. A uh, really easy way to do this would just to be substituting in each of these functions into a graphing calculator. And I'm going to go ahead and do this on our Desmos, uh, labeling this as function A, this as function C, and this as function D, so we can see that relationship. Here we have each of our functions. We have function A here, function C here, and function here along with our two coordinate pairs that we established need to be part of our plots. Um, going ahead and zooming out on this graph, we can see that our second coordinate point only gets crossed with one other function. Our other two linear functions, in fact, never seem to go near our 60, comma 7 point that was mentioned in the word problem context. Uh, this means that our blue function or our exponential function right here, function A, is going to be correct as it fulfills both of those coordinate pairs. So answer choice A is correct here. That is all for this video. I showed us a multitude of different ways that we can solve these questions via graphing. Remember, in our digital tool SAT math, we are allowed to use the graphing calculator, especially that Desmos, for every single question that we are provided with. That is some important information. Being able to navigate those calculators is also really important to know come test day. I hope that you enjoyed this video, um, and I'll see you guys when we go over our next skill. Goodbye.